Uh, welcome back students. In this video we're going to give you a basic introduction to our Hercus lathes, uh, take you through some of the names of the parts of the machinery and what they do. So let's get into it. Come on this side for starters. All right, so first thing when you come up to your lathe you'll see a whole bunch of different uh, buttons and switches. We've got our main power switch down here. Green button is how we switch our machine on. Red button is how we switch off. Uh, it's a good position here. It's in right in line with your knee and it protrudes out. So if you bump it, it's going to switch your machine off. So it's pretty handy. So let's go a bit further. On top of the lathe, on our headstock end, first thing you'll see is our guard with our switch block. And uh, this basically, the lathe won't switch on unless you have the guard down. Oh, you switch to lift the guard up. Probably not the best thing to do, but the machine switches off. That protects your uh, your hands from going anywhere near the chuck and the moving parts. Underneath our guard, we have our belt drive where everything happens. So we've got our drive belt under here. On the right hand side, you'll see our drive belt locking lever or our tensioner. And this will allow you to change gears. 90% of the time, your teacher will set this to the speed that will be on uh, appropriate for the uh, job that you're doing, be it drilling, facing off, turning parallel. So we can adjust it. Always make sure when you switch on your machine that your belt tensioner is tight. Don't push on it, just needs to be firm. And again, the machine won't switch on. There's a micro switch, safety switch. So when the, uh, the lid's up on the headstock, your machine won't switch on. Okay, so moving across the lathe, we have our carriage that we move across. And this basically carries everything across our bed of our lathe. Uh, that you're going to use to cut. On the top, so we've got our apron wheel on the front, we've got our cross slide which takes your cutter across the face of your work. Uh, it can be used depending on what sort of process you're doing. Uh, that's vital for machine operations. This side we have our compound slide. Acts very similar to our apron wheel but it's useful for undoing these two grub screws. And we can then set on our degree wheel uh, 40, 45 degrees. If you're doing a taper cut, we can set it and do, it's got uh, basically a small protractor that's out of sight. And we can set it anywhere from zero all the way around to about 50 degrees. And then we can take that cut on that uh, the desired angle. So I'll set that back to zero. Oh, on the top, we have our cutter. And on these ones, we have a uh, high speed steel square high speed steel cutting tip and we're going to adjust the height of that uh, every now and then they get a little bit blunt, a little bit blunt so we take them out and we sharpen them and we need to make sure that that's set up ready to go to cut on your tool uh, just be careful when you're moving around changing parts in and out of your chuck every now and then your hand may come fairly close to that cutter it is very very sharp you need to be careful you don't cut yourself speaking of the chuck open the guard we have our chuck and this is what's uh, used to hold all our work we have our chuck key down on our tool post on the right hand side and fitted to this lathe at the moment we have a three jaw dependent chuck. What that means is when we undo one of these sockets that every jaw will move dependent of each other. So they all move at the same time. So it's self-centering but no one is as accurate as a four jaw independent chuck which we'll teach you later on in year 11 and year 12. So we hold our work in our chuck. We're going to leave it it's a fairly chunky piece, about 25 millimetres in diameter. I'm going to have that about 25, 20, 25 millimetres out. Make sure that I really tighten up on my chuck to keep my work nice and secure. If you don't tighten it up on the, with your chuck key, as you're progressing drilling or facing off, your work may move backwards into the chuck and it may uh, mess up your measurements and your final piece. As we move down the bed, we have our tail stock. Now we mount a lot of different accessories in our tail stock. Uh, we've got a spindle wheel on the end, so when we're drilling with a chuck and a drill in the front, we can then measure our depth of our drill hole that we need to measure, uh, need to drill. We have a spindle lock if we have a live centre sitting in the bottom, uh, and all of these tools are located down on the right hand side. So we have our chuck with a centre drill mounted and our live centre if we're turning parallel. And these get put into a spindle. Wind out five or six turns, and we place the uh, place the live center into the spindle. And the Morse taper, this section here that's tapered, uh, has a lot of friction inside our taper, jams it in. To release this out, we wind our 
spin the wheel back till it stops and a little pin hits the end of our tool and pops it out. The same with our drill, with our chuck. Wind it out five or six turns, give it a jam in, holds it in the nice and firm. To release, you'll turn it backwards, it'll stop, but still protruding a centimetre out. Another couple of turns and out comes our chuck. All right, and they live down on the right hand side. Okay, to hold our live centre, sorry, our tail stock onto our bed, we have a locking lever at the back here, and that's designed to clamp underneath, underneath our bed as we lift up that hand wheel, sorry, lift up that lever, give it a bit of a tap, locks that onto the bed nice and secure to do the jobs that we do. I find it very handy to lock the lever when putting drills in, tightening up the drill chuck, taking the bits and pieces out, all the accessories so that it's not moving around, makes it a little bit safer. Um, from here, that's pretty much a good overview. Down on the right hand side, we have a variety of different brushes, really important for housekeeping, that we clean up after ourselves. So making sure that we start from the top of the chuck, around the chuck, around the bed, haven't done any machining at the moment, using the small brush around our cutter, work our way around our tool post, and then the larger brush with the red paint to be able to clean up our tray and our bed afterwards. Anyway, that's our Hercus lathe, bit of an overview, bit of an introduction. Look forward to seeing you again in the next videos. Thanks very much.